good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the channel. Today I am talking about Batman 89. Um, <clears throat> so I actually got this for Christmas, and I finally got around to finishing it. Uh, it, it started off pretty good, to be honest. Um, and, and for me personally, it, it, it degraded as it went on, and, and it finished actually kind of an embarrassing way to be honest let's let's let, let's start at the beginning so this is the technically the sort of like third batman film from tim burton there were a lot of rumors going around quite a long time ago where what tim burton wanted to do for batman 3 was going to involve billy d williams for toothpaste uh was it robin williams for riddler um a couple other villas i think he was going to throw in scarecrow in there as well um, and a lot of it seemed to be really interesting. Oh, big one that I have to refer back to is, is having Robin, uh, played by Marlon Waynes. It, it all sounds really, really intriguing. And I, and I, I love the sort of the idea of it. And I do think that if Tim Burton had control, it could have been fantastic. <clears throat> Obviously, I don't know if anyone knows here about what happens with the, the story between Batman, Batman Returns, and then the eventual was a Joel Schumacher Batman forever but essentially quickly round up uh, Batman made a lot of money uh, Batman returns uh, critically acclaimed uh, commercially acclaimed in terms of the fans the problem was it didn't sell enough merchandise um, more specifically I think it was down to McDonald's uh, there was a lot of pushback from McDonald's because they had uh, Batman toys in their, in their Happy Meals um, but there's a lot of other things that were recorded that that look, people didn't want to buy like the mutated penguins. They didn't want to buy like Joker thugs, that kind of thing. So in terms of Warner Brothers, where where we're so used to uh, this, the consumable part of it now, where there's there's so much toys and merchandise. Um, back in the sort of the early nineties, it, it it was only starting to be. I say starting to push that. I mean, how Star Wars was like in the nineteen seventies. Um, but th this was the first time that they kind of had that pushback from. What was essentially like an, a, an adult film that was marketed towards children because, you know, Batman. So Warner Brothers decided to go in a completely different direction for the third Batman film, which will bypass the title completely. <clears throat> um, so they, there are elements in Batman 89 that do continue on from Batman and Batman Returns, and that I actually do really appreciate. Obviously, it is written by Sam, is it Sam Ham? I can't remember the name. Yeah, Sam Hamm, who did co-wrote Batman. He does have a screen read for Batman Returns, but I don't know how much of Batman Returns he actually did write. So there is that kind of consistency there, which I do appreciate. There's a lot of things, like I said, that, that were being penned for the, the third Batman film that is actually within this. Like I said, Billy Dee Williams, uh, Two-Face is in it, and, and Robin's in it as well. As, as far as things that were going to be in the third Batman. I believe that's pretty much it. Where it falls down for me is it is titled Batman 89. It's supposed to be the continuation of the Tim Burton Batman series. And for a large portion of the, at least the first half, you're following Two-Face. Um, now, now, to a certain extent, I don't mind too much because you need kind of maybe a little bit more character building. Billy Dee Williams is uh, Harvey Dent didn't get too much screen time in Batman, uh, and I don't believe he was in Batman Returns at all. So there is a certain amount of character building that they needed to do for that. But I, for me personally, there's too much within that first half of the first half of the book to the point where, it, to me, it doesn't seem like a Batman book. It seems like a Billy Dee Williams Two Face book. And if they'd have called this. Batman 89 presents Two-Face, I'd have been slightly happy with it, to be honest. Um, another aspect of it that I, I wasn't too sure about was the fact that they do seem to be putting sort of current politics within within this book. Now, throughout Batman and Batman Returns, there's there's no reference to Billy D. Williams' race and a, a sort of racial conflict within Gotham, whereas this is highly prevalent. prevalent. Um, and to me, that just it, it threw it completely off, to be honest, because Batman was always just about how poor Gotham is in terms of like how how, how much of a high crime rate it is. Um, it was never addressed in terms of a race thing, whereas this, it's it's more about race than it is about the actual people feeling unsafe. 
and there are certain elements to it that I just think just don't work at all from that. Following on from that, that the, there is a sort of a race question, and especially when it comes to like Bruce Wayne slash Batman, because Batman is incompetent absolutely incompetent um it's because of his actions where a couple of black children are shot which causes more of a sort of a racial riot um throughout the entire i think it's six book mini series there is not one point where batman slash bruce wayne is seems like the good guy you know this is someone who's kind of devoted his life to actually cleaning up gotham he was beloved by the end of the first one he was loved even more at the end of the second one. This is a town that absolutely idolises him because they know what he is and what he does for the town. So the fact that he has been yeah, downgraded to essentially just an imbecile is, is really disrespectful for the character, to be honest. Um, there is one element that I believe that I actually kind of thought, yes, that is Batman Bruce Wayne, and it's actually towards the end. And funny enough, actually, Selina Kyle actually messes the whole thing up. Um, and it's that one moment I think that is Batman, you know, where he's sort of thinking about the situation. But then it, it's completely reversed right after that, where Selina tells him how much of an idiot he is. Um, so it, it, it's incredibly disrespectful for the character of Batman, not just the Tim Burton Batman, but Batman as a character as a whole. Um, I will say that the Billy D. Williams Two Face, incredibly, incredibly well written within this. I do like the fact that. He is just wanting what's best for, you know, him and the people of Gotham. You know, there's, there's things that I disagree with in terms of... Uh, he, he's, he looks at it as a, as a racial thing rather than just the people of Gotham. He looks at it as, like, has to do well for the black people. Um, so, so, again, it was nothing, nothing that was ever really prevalent in the original Batman films. So suddenly it's just highlighted within this one. And I thought it was just very, very strange. I do think the, I don't want to call it Marlon Wayne's Robin, because it's, it doesn't look like anything like Marlon Wayne's, but I did actually really like the Robin version of, or this Robin version, um, considering what we got in like Batman Forever, Batman Returns, I mean, sorry, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, I actually appreciate this Robin just that slightly more. Um, the costume was really, really good, and I, I, I love having like that kind of a Drake character. Um, like I said, the big shame is the fact that Drake seems to just be constantly one step ahead of Bruce and, and constantly more intelligent. And, and this is someone who's supposed to be looking up to Bruce, looking up to Batman as a mentor figure. And I don't think that actually works right if he's the more intelligent of the two. <clears throat> so the, the, the skeletal part of this book is there. There is a good book in theory there. But the execution of it, I think, is actually quite poor. Uh, to, like I said, to the point where we're actually being kind of insulting to the to the characters themselves um i i do think like one of the standout things for this book is without a doubt the art uh two-face looks spot on billy d williams absolutely phenomenal um selena carl looks perfect like michelle pfeiffer uh, there were some elements to the michael keaton batman that didn't quite look right to be honest um Mostly it looks it looks good, but I don't I don't ever remember Michael Keaton having grey hair, and that was one of the biggest biggest things to me that kind of threw me off. Um, one thing about the presentation, which I do actually have to say, uh, I love that front cover for Batman Eighty Nine. I think it's gorgeous, and if you just look at the back, that that is just a stunning piece of art. Um, the other thing I will say is I love the retro feel to the to the hardback after you take off the sleeve. It is a VHS tape, and the fact that it said Batman Batman eighty nine on the side there, like it's been written, it just it, it, perfect, absolutely perfect. It's, it's little things like that that I just think um, make the entire collection just spot on absolutely fantastic um there was there was one particular instance actually where i do say that the artwork failed for me um and it's it's one panel and to be honest if you're looking at one panel in a book of 150 maybe 160 pages then it's not doing too bad you know in terms of 
how the characters are portrayed, they look fantastic. Like I've said, they all look like the actors. So that's, that's a really good thing. But this one particular panel did kind of throw me off a little bit. And it's this one with Two-Face where the sort of burnt side of his face is, is, is off his face completely. Um, so that's something that completely missed from the editing suite, um, which, which is, a, is a little bit of a shame because I was, I was honing in on it going, that doesn't look right. Why doesn't it look right? And then I saw the black part of his face and then the acid part like there. So you've got normal face there, then acid part there. It, it, no, um, someone had completely missed that. Um, uh, overall, slightly disappointed, um, going to be honest. I wanted to enjoy this. I wanted to like, like I said, it started off really, really good. Uh, I love the artwork, but if, if I'm going to rate it out of a 10, it, it's going to be like a, a three, three and a half. You know, the fact that it, it's, there is a good story there, but the execution is, is not there for me. Um, I felt like I had a lot to say and I think I've said it all. Um, yeah, unfortunately a little bit disappointed by this. You know, I do love the Michael Keaton Batman films. I, I love the Tim Burton um, era of Batman. And so I, I, I really, really wanted to, to see what this was about. Um, but for me, unfortunately, it's 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 one of those Batman duds. Um, but guys, if you have read Batman 89, please let me, let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe because it really does help me out. And I'll see you all in the next video.